to day four of the vid21 conference my name is julia still the creator and host and we are joined by a man that i met a few years ago that every time i meet him he just makes me insanely happy so uh, if you are joining this session going oh my god it's eight o'clock in the morning it's thursday i wish it was friday why aren't we at the weekend yet you've come to an amazing uh -huh. session because uh, this man just is a wonderful storyteller and ultimate creative and i'm talking about the wonderful chris Ber um, Chris helps people create, capture and communicate great ideas. He teaches and coaches business people, everything from storytelling, creativity, facilitation and presentation skills. His clients include ANZ Bank, L'Oreal, Arnott's and the ABC and many, many more. And when he's not working, you'll find him in his happy place near the ocean, usually with a camera in hand because he is an amazing photographer. Um, Chris, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is an absolute pleasure. And you're going to tell us how to change our story. <coughs> Thank you, Julia. I'm, I'm mildly terrified now after that billing, but I have already been for a swim in the ocean this morning. And without that, I'm a different person. So uh, that's maybe one of the secrets if I do happen to share a little bit of energy and excitement this morning. Welcome to everybody that's tuning in, especially Sharon. Um, I thought I'd start with a story about my storytelling journey because it started when a client said to me, can you teach us a, um, a, a training module on storytelling in business? And uh, I remember thinking, I know nothing about storytelling. And so what I said to the client was, yes, of course, I'd be delighted to do that for you. Um, and I remember as uh, when I had young kids at home, each night I'd tell them a crazy story before they went to bed. I thought, well, I'll perhaps draw on that. And it's gotta be an easy gig, telling, teaching storytelling, uh, make a few bucks and then I'll go back to what I normally do. And since then, uh, my life has been changed by storytelling. I think I've begun to understand that we are our stories, that we listen through stories, we learn through stories, we make sense of the world through stories. Stories are so much more powerful than little anecdotes you tell your mates or um, stories you might tell the kids uh, in, in the evening. Uh, and so to understand stories and to harness the power of stories is the key to maybe unblocking yourself a little bit, to communicating better with other people, and um, generally kind of a sense of progress and fulfillment. So that's my storytelling journey. Um, I, this session is a little bit workshoppy. So if you imagine yourself in somebody's workshop and they've handed you a hammer or a saw, uh, you're gonna get to go and play with these tools. Uh, in the space of this short session, I don't think we're gonna become master crafts people, um, but hopefully you'll get a sense of what these tools can do and hopefully you'll want to embrace them and try them on yourself. That is our plan for the session. Um, so I thought I'd kick off with a little bit of theory about storytelling. Um, and the, the fact that when we as, as people are presented with data, maybe a, a number or something like that, our brains use a very small portion of what's available to process it and make sense of it. Raw data, the facts and figures that we love to use in business are not great ways of connecting with people and making sense of the world. On the, <clears throat> what the brain actually does when it's presented with data is try and build the story about that data for itself because it can't process the data by itself. Um, the other thing the brain does when it sees a whole bunch of data is, is it edits it and creates a story um, that I have to say isn't, doesn't tend to be a very good story. The stories we carry in our heads are not well written. And I sometimes think if you were to make a documentary out of whatever we each of us carry in our heads, it's the kind of documentary nobody would wanna see. Um, and I'll tell you why. It's, firstly, the stories tend to be written with a negative bias. Uh, our brains tend to focus on things that have gone wrong rather than things that have gone right. And so the, the documentary that um, you might see on TV, if it's the one that's in your, in your head, um, would be a bit downbeat and a bit depressing. 
Um, secondly, what the brain does is it'll pick on a very specific instance of something happening and it'll make a wild generalization about that. Uh, so for example, let's say you do badly at a math test at school or something. Your brain goes, right, bad result in math test. Conclusion, I am dreadful at numbers, a wild generalization. Um, and and uh, if you could be dispassionate and logical, well, okay, maybe I had a bad day, maybe it's just a certain aspect of math, but no, 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 no. This one little data point is proof that I'm no good at numbers. And that's a story that's starting to appear in your head. It's part of that internal documentary that we all have. Uh, John Sharp, the clinical psychologist, calls these things mean little myths. Mean little myths that are there in each of our heads um, that guide our behavior. The third thing uh, our, our brain does with these little stories is, is it self-reinforces. So the moment you've made a decision, like you're no good at maths, let's go with that one, um, the next time a, a set of numbers comes up, you're looking at those numbers through the lens of no good at maths. I'm no good at maths. I'm never going to understand these numbers. Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask for this kind of thing. Uh, and so these stories that we have in our heads can become blockages to achieving what we want to do. And they, they guide the way we become as people. Um, so this session is all about helping to understand some of the stories that may be in our heads and ask the question, are these stories helping me or are they hindering me? And if you feel there's something in your head that may be hindering you, um, I'm going to share three tools that will help you to adjust that story or change that story, or if you want, even ditch that story. So you can kind of um, get on and achieve what you want to achieve. Now, um, I'm not a clinical psychologist and a little health warning here. If you're dealing with a difficult emotional issue or, or something complicated, this is definitely not the session for you. Um, this is lighthearted and a fun opportunity to have a peer into your own head and maybe the head of somebody else that you're teamed up with. Um, but it's not, it's not a chance to kind of explore deep personal issues. I just wanted to make that clear up front. Um, so as it's early in the morning and um, You've probably heard enough of me talking. I thought we'd get straight into some storytelling. Now I'm hoping Sarah can put us into um, pairs in a second and, and, and we're gonna go for a short breakout and here's what I want you to do in the breakout. I want you to tell the story of yourself to the, part, to the partner that you're teamed up with. Imagine you're at a barbecue or something like that and you, somebody wa uh, wanders up to you um, and says, so tell me about yourself. Um, I want you to tell that story to your partner. Now it's an outrageously ambitious task for a breakout because the breakout's gonna be seven minutes long, which means you've got about three minutes per person to tell the story yourself. So I apologize for that. Um, and I'm deliberately not gonna give you any kind of guidance on how you tell it, where do you start the story? Do you talk about your professional life? Is it your personal life, your friendships, your sporting, whatever it is you want. I don't mind just, so we're just gonna go into pairs and wait to say hi, who are you and so on. And then then go, well, so tell me about yourself and da, 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 da. And after three minutes, I'll do a, um, a time warning, uh, switch to the other person who gets to tell the story of themselves. Try not to interrupt. If you can do that, it's a real challenge for me, that kind of thing. Try to just listen and, oh yeah, that's interesting, and so on. And at the end, each person, what I want you to do when you've heard this story, uh, and before you come back into the room, I want you to tell your partner what that story was about as a listener. So you're listening to all this stuff, you know, maybe you've been to different countries, maybe you've had an amazing career. I want the partner to say, this is what your story was about. And it's not a memory test. I'm not asking you to say, I heard you said, went to this university and I you've been on holiday to these places or whatever. It's a, the story underlying theme in your story was this or that or the other. Hopefully that was a good session. Can I just chuck it out um, to you? I, I, we had a good session, um, Sharon and I and Paul. How did it go? I guess there was one other little group. Did, did it work at all? What did, what did you find? Yeah, it was, um, I was with Sue and um, it was, it was really lovely. Um, and it was really interesting to hear the reflections, uh, the reflection back. That's great. Um, <laughs> what yeah. did you think, Sue? 
Oh, it's finding the mute button, eh? Um, <laughs> yes, I, I, I would agree. Um, how lovely to, first of all, um, when you, uh, just very briefly, when you think of telling your story in such a short amount of time, like I had a bunch rushing through my head going, hmm, how do I condense that down? Um, so uh, I um, generously let Sarah go first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, clever. clever. <laughs> yeah, but I, I love that. I love the, the um, requirement to feedback. So, you know, um, as uh, themes were coming through from what Sarah was sharing, um, as you said, not a memory exercise, but really listening to what that journey was about. I, I love that exercise. Great. Thank you. So it's possible even at this early stage in our session, you, you might have learned something because you've been teamed up with people who maybe don't know you very well. They've listened to the words you're saying and they've gone, do you know what? I think this might be what, what your story is about. Uh, uh, the, the health warning, of course, is it's based on a ridiculously short little session. They might have got it wildly wrong. So if they said, I think you're driven by power, feel free to go, that's absolute rubbish. You know nothing about me. And so don't worry if it's if you feel it's going wrong. But I'm hoping maybe there's a little glimpse of something that, that you might have learned about yourself. So in a way, that's... Um, it's already great progress because these stories that drive us are often a little bit subconscious. They're not really aware they're there. They seem to be completely natural, completely obvious. Uh, as I said, they're self-reinforcing. They're kind of hardwired in some respects into our brains. Uh, so we're kind of not um, not aware of them. I, I, what, what somebody I know every now and then you say, "Why did you do this?" And she goes, "Well, I just had to." And that's her story. So she's been, she, there's no other option in her mind. It's driven by the story that she's got inside her head. And an outsider saying, well, you didn't. I don't know why you had to do it. To her, she was driven by that story. So he, he, there they are, these badly edited, weird stories that are in our heads that drive who we are, and perhaps more importantly, get in the way of what we want to do. Our lives. So, so if you're something that you're trying to achieve and, and you're feeling a blockage, I'm hoping that the little tools I'm going to share might actually help you unlock some things. So, um, for example, if you're working on getting a bit more healthy, there could be something in your mind that's, that's stopping you that goes, well, I'm not that kind of person I can't do that or, or if you're trying to become a bit more artistic, let's say, um, and, and you're thinking, um, I haven't got a creative bone in my body, how could I possibly maybe we'll get some clues to sort of unlock a bit of that, the new stuff that you might wanna do. So here are three tools that I'm gonna share and we'll do a second breakout before too long. Um, we'll give them a go. So, right, I wanna to, want to share tool number one. Let's imagine there's a little blockage that, that we've learned about in session number one and uh, you're thinking, how can I overcome it? So. First uh, tool to unblock something in your, in your inner story is this. Identify it, and if my camera is going to focus, come on camera, uh, celebrate it, celebrate it. So it sounds weird. It, it, we're not going to change it at all. We're going to celebrate it. We're going to play with it. We're going to publish it. We're going to acknowledge it. Um, uh, by the way, if you're thinking, that's not a very good tool. I hope he's got some better ones lined up. Um, I think it's the best tool I've got. Um, I think um, Brenny Brown would applaud this tool because she talks about the power of being vulnerable, the power of being open about who you are and what's inside. So part of it, the first tool is don't change it, change it at all, but celebrate it, bring it out, get confident with it. I'll give you an example about me. I'm very badly organized. I have a story in my head that says I couldn't organize my way out of a paper bag. I couldn't organize a piss up in a brewery, you know, but, uh, that's it. And um, instead of punishing myself for that, I think, well, why don't I embrace that? People that are bad at little details are good at the big picture. Uh, people that are bad at little details are good at improvising because things go wrong and they learn to cope in the moment. So one tool that you can use if you've got this hang up about, being organized is to go, well, that's who I am. I'm gonna celebrate it. I'm gonna be vulnerable. I'm gonna be open. I'm gonna play with this. Um, I might tell my mates, by the way, if you ever book a meeting with me, double check it. You know, we say it's gonna be on the 2nd of March. I'd probably put it in for the 3rd of February. Um, that's the kind of thing I do. Um, and I sometimes, I'm, I'm really good at getting dates wrong. It's a special skill that I have and most people don't have. So um, celebrate the story. Um, don't hide it, acknowledge it. And, and as I said, 
it, it may be the most powerful tool I've got um, based on this idea of being vulnerable and open and kind of honest with yourself. So tool number one. Um, tool number two is a little bit more complicated and it's very helpful to help have other people help you with this tool. So tool number two is, is as you might expect, well, take your story and edit it a little bit. Edit it. Give your brain a hand, because as I said, the way the brain edits tends to be negatively. It looks at the world through quite a dark lens. I don't know why. I think Darwin should help us out on this one. I would think it would help us look at the world through a bright lens. But um, edit your story a little bit. And I'll, I'll give you an example of how this can work in practice. Um, I was running a session like this. Uh, a short time ago and we did that exercise break out into into pairs and I found myself teamed up with this um, young woman um, and I said tell me about your story and she said okay before I tell you I just want you to know I'm really boring and I was gobsmacked when she said that she actually had said some really interesting things earlier on she was wearing brightly colored clothes and I was delighted to have been teamed up with her by chance by the random zoom thing and I I, I, I thought wow that's the last word I would think of to to describe you so I said really well, why, why do you say you're boring and I said oh you know I, I live by myself I made I've got these two dogs and I'm, I really am I'm a really boring person and I challenged her, I said, you please to be a boring person, is that a good thing? She said, well, let me tell you how it works. And she explained how she feels she's really good at getting on with people because she's so boring. She, she can get on with people with big personalities. She can get on with people who are kind of shy and retiring. And that's the great advantage of being boring. So I put it to her that that's not a good description of her skill to be boring. She's actually very flexible. She knows how to be that kind of invisible person. She knows how to be a bright, bubbly person. She, she has a real skill for bonding with people and listening to people. And so I, uh, she reflected on this word boring and whether it was a, actually a good word. Um, and she agreed that it was, probably wasn't the best word to use to describe who she was. And so we kind of, we helped her edit her story. We helped her to change the world where she sees the world from being someone who's boring to someone who's very flexible and able to listen well. So that's tool number two. And it really helps to have someone else to help you to do that because your brain will go, no, no, it's true. I really am boring. And you know, you'll see yourself in that strange mirror, uh, reinforcing those, those uh, mean little myths that I mentioned. Okay, that's tool number two. Um, uh, and, uh, tool number three is, in a way, the most fun tool of all, um, and um, in a way, the easiest tool of all. Um, and tool number three is this, write a new story. Um, and I, I, I'm going to tell you a personal story about, about how I've done that with myself. And it, it, it's particularly suitable for people who like a bit of acting or role play and are comfortable doing things which aren't them, if you like, at least at first. So um, Julia mentioned that I'm, I'm also a photographer. And I used to, this is about 10 years ago, I had a busy job in a consultancy, had a, a young family that was um, growing and occupying a lot of my time. And I had this sort of thing in the back of my mind, I want to become a photographer. I need to, need to, need to be more than just that amateur with a camera. And I, I had no idea how to make it happen. It just wasn't going to happen for me. Other people could become photographers, but I was busy and I, I just couldn't see a way of doing it. Now I was uh, used to ride to work on a motorbike and I was coming home one evening um, riding across Sydney Harbour Bridge. And if you've ever ridden a motorbike, you, you'll know that experience of wearing a crash helmet because you're own, in your own little world. You can talk to yourself, no one can hear you. You hear yourself in your own breath quite well. So it's a great place to kind of muse on things and to chat and try to process things. And uh, literally, as I was riding, riding across Sydney Harbour Bridge, I had this moment of clarity. And I thought, I know. I'll just start, I'll be a photographer. And it, 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 you may think it sounds like a small step, but for me, it was very big. It's instead of being, I'm a wannabe photographer. I, I, I mean, by the time I got to the other side of the bridge in North Sydney, I was a photographer. Uh, and when I got home, I thought, well, what would a photographer do if they, they, they got home? Now, bear in mind, I, I, I'm wearing a strange coat at this point, a coat that I hadn't worn before. Um, 
And I, so I thought I called up a, a posh hotel. I wanted to book a fashion shoot for it's worth. And I, I used my photographer's voice, not not my Chris Meredith voice. And I went, I'd like to book a book your swimming pool on the top floor to do a photo shoot, please. Um, and next thing I know, I was talking to their public relations manager and yeah, we can slot you in on Tuesday week. That's good. Thank you very much. And then I called a model that I'd admired for some time and said, oh, I've got this great venue for a shoot and I'm looking for some talent to join me. Blah, 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 blah. And she said, yes. And, I'm, and the next thing you knew, there was this photo shoot happening and um the th i remember look, looking so sort of looking at myself and said they have got no idea that i'm just some dude that knows how to talk like this a little bit and uh, i've got a big fat camera that makes it look like i'm a photographer but who's any the wiser so that was the start of my new story as a photographer and over time, I kept telling myself that story. I, I got started to get work and get paid for photo shoots and so on. And that was many years ago. And, and now I'm really happy to talk about the fact that I'm a photographer and it has become my story. But at first it wasn't. It was just something that I played with and I forced myself to, um, to role play, if you like. So um, those, are, those are my three tools for kind of changing your story. Own it, celebrate it, be vulnerable, be open. That's probably the most powerful one. Um, and the scariest one, because you've got to kind of go, it's true. Um, second one, get someone to help you to tweak the story. Um, and then the third one, which I think is the most fun, if you like a bit of role play, is just write a new one. Why not? Um, first, qu first quick question, what do you think of those three tools? Uh, anything you think of this all shit, I better wish I'd had another cup of coffee this morning, or anybody thinking there might be something in one of those? I like how you just adopted this whole persona in this photographer <laughs> voice. I'm gonna just, I need a new, I need a new voice for my new story. <laughs> yes, I like the last one too. It's like, it seems to be the fastest pathway to, to create. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you a tip on that on that last one it's uh, consultants know that one well when you if you're writing a pitch to win a project you make all sorts of promises that you don't think through that well we'll we'll do this and we'll tap dance and we'll sky that and we'll do this and um uh the client might say well how will you do that and you, you have to learn to drop your voice a bit and start your sentence as you're panicking about the answer and start your sentence with words well what we normally do is and then you quick, quickly think of some words to come after that <laughs> it gives you a couple of seconds um yeah it's great fun to do and very surprising uh, uh, i think we it's amazing what you can achieve when you just wear that coat that says i'm a this or i'm a that um, I have thank to say, you. some people are just bad at maths. Like, <laughs> I mean, so my mum, for as long as I can remember, would tell me, we'd come home from school and she said, oh, I hate maths, I'm terrible at maths. One day I came home and she, I said, mum, 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 I got you know 80% in a maths test. And she turned around and said, what's it out of? <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, you're terrible at maths. <laughs> you're terrible at maths, mum. <laughs> Well, as long as you can own it and enjoy it. <laughs> you can laugh at your stories as well, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we're going to go into our second breakout session now, and I'd love you to have a try of these. And what I'd like is the people who are listening first to start with a, a, um, a statement about who they think that other person is. So in other words, um, you're having heard that person's story, um, I want you to help them to kind of edit it or, or re-understand that story or reframe that story to use Sue's word. Um, so start your sentence with, with these words. I think you're a who you are as a person. If you if you if you're thinking what well, I don't know what kind of word to put in there, um, you if you're familiar with the archetypes. Um, models you, you could use an archetype you could say I, I think you're a hero I think you've overcome incredible obstacles and you've brought some justice to the world that might be or you might say I think you're a, an explorer you've gone out into the world and found out new things or are, are you familiar with archetypes I won't I won't drone on about them if you know Sharon's shaking her head um, so uh, archetypes are, are kind of like personas that you see through in stories throughout the world and over time. Um, uh, so, so Harry Potter was a hero. He he writes wrongs. He 
battle things. Uh, there's the sage who, who spread wisdom in the world. There's the caregivers who kind of look after people. Um, there's the outlaws who like to destroy. There are rulers who like to bring order into the world. I'm married to a ruler. She likes everything in neat boxes. Um, uh, if things are neat and tidy, it doesn't matter so long as things are neat and tidy. Um, uh, there are jesters who, who like to live in the moment and enjoy themselves. Uh, and they have a special power for telling the truth because they can lighten the mood and say, say the truth. So it may be you want to pick one of those personas. So I think you're an this person but don't worry if that's if archetypes aren't your thing to say I think this is who you might be uh, so start with that I think you're a and then have a chat if, as the recipient of that kind of whether you think there's any truth in that why they might have drawn that conclusion um and seven minutes so so we've got a lot of time to explore this and then flip to the other way around after three minutes we'll go kind of uh, what do you think and so on Thank you all. I mean, it's, it's wonderful feedback. I, I, I had imagined this to be a kind of first thing in the morning, really half asleep, probably on a bus um, and going, I hope you know, I'm actually here just for the next session. So I'm, I'm really touched and excited by what you've just said, all of you. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We're, we're at